Welcome to the Crypto Breakdown Cadena Whiteboard Mini Series. In this mini series, I'm going to help you understand every aspect about the Cadena blockchain from a first principle standpoint. In today's video, we're going to talk about the most advanced smart contract coding language that the world has ever seen, aka PAC. Cadena's smart contract coding language is so much more superior to everything else in the industry. It's almost like comparing MySpace to Facebook. So let's talk about the difference between MySpace and Facebook. According to Bogdan Sandu, MySpace was a social media networking service based in the United States. Launched on August 1st of 2003, the site was the first social network to reach a global audience and it had a significant influence on technology, pop culture, and music. The site played a critical role in the early growth of companies like YouTube and it created a developer platform that launched the success of Zanga, RockU, Photobucket, and many more. From 2005 to 2008, MySpace was the largest social networking site in the world. MySpace was the king of social media. But a couple years later, Facebook would dominate the industry, eventually surpassing MySpace in total number of users by 2008. Now, there are many discussions and debates surrounding what happened and what caused the demise of MySpace. There were major management errors and strategic mistakes that are often cited for the reason of the social network's downfall. However, all of these issues and smaller details led back to what is essentially one main mistake made by the MySpace team. The MySpace team approached running MySpace as a corporate entity. It tried to over plan and professionally manage a system that relied on creative thinking and dynamic workflow. They continued to make MySpace more and more centralized when they should have been trying to make it more and more decentralized. This was the big secret of Facebook, that no matter how big Facebook grew, it still maintained that startup mentality. Facebook was designed in white space, allowing the design to flow where it needed to go and the market dictated. There is a multitude of reasons why Facebook won while MySpace failed. MySpace had a clumsy design interface that could easily confuse new users. Many of its apps and features were faulty and had bugs. And MySpace was just always behind in technology from early on. Later on, MySpace attempted to fix these issues. They tried redesigning their user interface and they started to allow third parties to design software. But it all came as too little and too late. Now, when we start talking about smart contract coding languages like Solidity, it's hard to imagine that coding languages that were designed in 2014 and are not upgradable could ever compete with a smart contract coding language like Pact. Unlike Pact smart contracts, Solidity smart contracts cannot be upgraded. Pact also uses what is called formal verification. Formal verification is like a self-auditing software that is designed to help coders write safer code. Formal verification uses technology created by Microsoft called Z3. So imagine you're playing a game of chess and every time you went to move a piece on the chess board into a new position, the board would light up with a big warning sign. Imagine if the chess board even gave you an explanation as to why you were about to make a dangerous move. Even new players with little to no experience would be able to compete against some of the best players in the world. Coding in Pact is just like that. Because Pact uses what's called formal verification, the software analyzes every line of code that you write. The software is constantly looking for ways to break your code. If formal verification finds a bug in your code, a little red triangle will appear on the left side of your screen. Now you can click on that little triangle and the code is gonna display a short explanation letting you know exactly where you have a bug in your code. And you guys wanna know what's even more crazy than that, sometimes the error message will even tell you how to fix the bug. So another fun fact for you, just like Bitcoin's coding language, Pact is a Turing incomplete coding language. On the other hand, we have blockchains like Ethereum that use a Turing complete coding language like Solidity. Blockchains like Solana also use a Turing complete coding language called Rust, both of which are looping coding languages. This means that they can never use formal verification even if they wanted to. A majority of hacks that take place in the DeFi space trace back to the fact that hackers can exploit backdoors in the code. These backdoors are loopholes that end up giving the hackers access to millions of dollars worth of liquidity inside the protocol. By the time the protocol realizes they are being hacked, the hackers already made off with the majority of the funds. The next cool feature that makes Pact so much more superior than other smart contract coding language is the fact that Pact is wrote in human readable code. This means that after your smart contract executes, you still have ability to read the code. That is a complete game changer, guys. Now, I know that this next part is gonna be above your head, but in order for you to understand what I'm trying to explain, I need you to be able to visualize the difference between Pact and Solidity. So let's dive into understanding bytecode and ABI. 
Ethereum uses what's called an EVM or the Ethereum Virtual Machine. The virtual machine is the core component of the network. Smart contract code that is written in high level languages needs to be compiled into EVM bytecode to run. EVM bytecode is executable code for the EVM. Contract ABI is an interface that is designed for interacting with EVM bytecode. For example, if you wanna call a function in a smart contract with your JavaScript code, ABI plays a role as the intermediary between the JavaScript code and the EVM bytecode to interact with each other. Taking a look at this diagram, it shows the architecture of contract ABI EVM bytecode, and outside components like dApps in the network. The left side is the process of compiling, and the right side is the process of interacting. If you follow the red arrows on the diagram, you can get a general understanding of how this process works. When you write an Ethereum smart contract in raw format, it's kind of sort of in human readable code. But before the smart contract is executed, it needs to get compiled. Before a Web3 application can interact with an Ethereum smart contract, the code needs to be compiled into bytecode. So let me play a quick slideshow to help you guys get a better understanding of what I mean. So taking a look at the screen now, this is EVM bytecode. Every letter and number represents part of the original code. Even some of the most advanced programs in the world have a difficult time reverse engineering EVM bytecode. To the average human, trying to read EVM bytecode is no different than trying to read hieroglyphics. EVM bytecode is a low-level programming language which is compiled from a high-level programming language such as Solidity. EVM is a virtual machine which places between OS and the application layer to mitigate OS dependency. EVM bytecode is not human readable and it is designed to be readable by machines only. All right, squad, now that you have a general understanding of why programming in Solidity is an engineering nightmare, I want to show you a website that you're never going to hear the mainstream crypto media talking about. It's called saveby.cadena.network. This website shows us a list of crypto projects that got hacked in early 2021. If eight out of these 11 projects would have built their project using the coding language Pact, the developers would have never been able to program in bad code that gave the hackers the ability to exploit the protocol. Over $852,250,000 could have been saved if these applications just would have built their project in the coding language called Pact. In my opinion, coding languages like Rust and Solidity will never be anywhere near as safe as Pact. Now, unfortunately, the last time this website was updated was back in October of 2021. Since then, crypto investors have lost over $100 billion because of hacks, scams, rug pulls, and pyramid Ponzi scheme proof of stake projects like Terra Luna and Time Wonderland. Just imagine how much money investors would have saved if every product in the crypto space would have been built with a coding language as safe as packed. Now, let's take a step back and look at things from a first principle standpoint. If you were a $100 million, or better yet, a billion dollar legacy Web2 business, would you ever consider building a Web3 application using a coding language like Solidity or Rust? Highly doubtful. If you were a billion dollar financial institution, would you consider building DeFi applications using a coding language like Rust or Solidity after watching investors lose over $100 billion in the last 12 months? Highly doubtful. That is what makes Pact and the Cadena blockchain so powerful. The Cadena team sat in the shadows for the last seven years, watching, learning, and studying. Because the founders of Cadena built JP Morgan Chase's first blockchain called Juno, they knew firsthand the limitations that the blockchain industry was facing. And this is why Pact was created. Stuart Popejoy and Will Martino knew that they could never build a blockchain that could meet the demands of global real world adoption and support billions of transactions and users every day using any of the original coding language that existed in the industry. So for the last seven years, the Cadena team has been skillfully crafting the world's most advanced and most secure smart contract coding language called Pact. So let's recap everything that we learned so far and talk about a few more key highlights about Pact. Number one, Pact uses formal verification, which makes coding in Pact 1 billion times safer than coding in Solidity. Pact makes blockchain safe again. Number two, Pact is an upgradable smart contract language. This means that it has the ability to evolve. Solidity does not. This makes Solidity more like MySpace and Pact more like Facebook. Number three, Pact is wrote in human readable code. Not only does this keep developers honest, but it also makes coding in Pact so easy that you can teach an eight year old how to write a Pact smart contract in less than 10 minutes. This is a fact, my son did it. The link to that video is down in the description. 
And number four, Pact is Turing incomplete. Just like Bitcoin, Pact is a Turing incomplete coding language. Blockchains like Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, Phantom, and Harmony are built with Turing complete coding languages. Turing complete means that their blockchains can't use formal verification, and no matter how hard they try or how good their developers are, their coding language will never be as safe or secure as Pact. And that's just my opinion, but I'm pretty sure I'm yet to be proven wrong. Pact is the safest and most secure, user-friendly coding language for writing smart contracts. It is designed for security and performance. It is Turing incomplete, human readable, and it supports upgradable smart contracts. And it uses formal verification to make high performance and secure smart contracts. Well, that's a wrap crypto fam. If you wanna learn more about Kadena, check out my Kadena whiteboard playlist. The links are down in the description. And if you have any questions, come join us live on my second YouTube channel.